Loss of control. We read about it, hear about it, and we talk about it. But what are we doing about it? According to the NTSB, 40% of fatal accidents in general aviation are attributed to in-flight loss of control. We can reasonably assume that none of these pilots intended to lose control of their aircraft. So why does this happen? In most cases, these pilots tested the aerodynamic limits of their wings and lost. An airplane can stall at any airspeed in any attitude. So why do we continue to use airspeed as a direct correlation to a wing stall? Because for most light GA aircraft, the airspeed indicator is the only in-cockpit device we have for telling us how close we're getting to a stall, that point where the wing exceeds its critical angle of attack. But there's just one problem. Book numbers work great when the plane is in 1G level flight. Under any other circumstances, the stall speed will change. So if we can't rely on airspeed as a certain indication of an oncoming stall, what do we do? The stall warning horn might give us a clue, but by then it could be too late. What we need is a more precise tool for measuring lift. That tool is an AOA, or Angle of Attack Indicator. AOA doesn't care how heavy the aircraft is, its angle of bank, or what the air temperature is. AOA looks at one thing and one thing only, the angle between the cord line and the relative wind, and how close that is to the critical angle where a stall will always occur. The airlines use AOA indicators, and the military has been flying AOA for years, if for no other reason than they require precise information about aircraft performance. Really precise information. But until recently, it's been cost prohibitive for GA. Innovations in technology and the streamlining of FAA installation requirements for AOA systems have changed that. There are essentially three types of indicators for GA aircraft. The vane type, the pressure differential type, and the attitude heading reference system integrated or AHRS type. Each type has some advantages and disadvantages, but all will provide relatively precise information about AOA. The vane style, which is widely used in corporate and military aircraft, shows direct indications of AOA. These work well, but must be mounted in a location that provides clean airflow. The pressure-derived indicators were the first type to be adapted for GA and are currently the most popular. But typically, most of the models currently available don't take into account flap configuration changes. The AHRS-driven systems take into account flap settings, either up or down. Typically, AOA information is already present in the AHRS data that is fed to the instrument displays, so it's just a matter of depicting it. Any AOA display currently available will graphically depict how the wing is performing aerodynamically and specifically how close we're getting to asking the wings to do something they no longer can, namely, fly. No matter which type you choose, an AOA indicator is a proven safety device. The NTSB and FAA have recognized the need for AOA in light aircraft and have made some remarkable strides to make them easy to install. There are no complicated installation requirements, and most systems simply require installation and logbook entry by your local AMP mechanic. With proper training, an AOA indicator allows us to take advantage of the wing's full lift capability without going over the edge. Literally. It can help us fly approaches more precisely and extract more overall performance from the wing. Definite bonuses when operating out of short fields. But landing on any runway with less energy to dissipate is always a good thing. During an unplanned go-around, an AOA indicator can tell us how close we may be to a stall before changing flap settings. Or let's say we didn't notice that tailwind on the base leg that pushes us through the base to final turn. This situation is a setup for a classic cross-controlled stall close to the ground. Using an AOA indicator will show us our changing angle of attack in this situation well before the stall warning horn will. The accident record suggests that relying on good airmanship, airspeed, and stall warning horns is not sufficient. As humans, we are capable of getting overworked and distracted. An AOA indicator can remind us when lapses in airmanship or poor decision-making may have gotten us into a bad situation. So the underlying theme to all of these benefits is one that can save our lives, improved stall awareness and prevention. And just like any other situational awareness tool that presents us with accurate objective data, it won't tell us what to do with that data. 
That part is still up to us. 